Hey. Hello. Hello, man. How are you? How's it going? Good, good, good. Yeah. I was trying to figure it out, uh, this Instagram thing. Yeah, I know, I know. I tell the people that it's the first EG Live that you do, so it's not a problem. And yeah, we are happy to to hosting here in Gecko. And Thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, I can remember when you when I met you in a cafe in a in a really mm. good school here in Florence, one of the amazing schools. I, re that I remember too. I remember too. Yes. Cool. Yes, in one of the best one of the best schools in the world, probably. Yes, definitely. definitely. In this fantastic city. Yes, yes. That was before everything gets a little bit, you know, with COVID, everything got a little bit strange. But yes, I remember when we met and all all the talks we used to have, uh, sharing the knowledge. And it's very exciting now to be here with you talking. It's great. It's great. We're doing stuff. It's amazing. Nice. Tell me, tell me, tell me more about you before Florence, before this, uh, yeah, this uh, try to search in the artistic way. So... Tell me, tell me sure. more. Uh, I have to try to summarize it because it's a long, long story. So I'll try to make it short. But um, basically, when I was very, very young, uh, 14, maybe 13, 14, 15, something like that, my dream was to move to Florence and become an artist. Um, that was the goal I had back then. And, you know, I was thinking, well, how am I going to do this? You know, shall I do it through university? Shall How? I mean, I didn't know. The only thing I knew is that I wanted to be a painter. And it was a time I wanted to be a sculptor as well, but finally fell in love with, with painting. And especially Caravaggio. I don't know, uh, I cannot really remember how, but I mean, my first hero was, you know, Raphael, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci. But shortly after I met Caravaggio and basically what I did when I was a teenager was doing master copies. I was basically doing the training, what, you know, what people do in the academies. I was doing it by myself because I just love it. And that's why I started to train myself when I started to try to paint like Caravaggio, try to understand, well, Caravaggio amongst many others. But he was like somehow the, the, the most inspiring one, at least at the time. And yeah, that was the goal. Like I have to go to Italy. I have to go to Florence. If, I mean, back then, I didn't know if I would go to another city, if I would go to Rome, I don't know. But, you know, that was like the dream I had. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know, uh, things went in a different direction. And, you know, uh, well, you have to go to university. Uh, maybe, you know, why don't you move to the UK? You know, there you can do something else. And that's where I took a different path. Uh, but I always have very clear, like, one day I have to go back of, you know, this passionate world that is academic painting. I, that's what I really want to do. But yes, I just went in another direction. Uh, but I remember I used to tell everybody back then, like, guys, one of these days, figurative painting and sculpture is going to come back. Um, and some people were like, well, I don't know, that's some kind of like old fashioned. I'm like, no, no, it's going to happen. It has to happen. And it did. You made it. It totally happen. did. Made it exactly. <laughs> I think a lot of people, we made it happen. So it's, it's I mean, amazing. So, of course, that's a couple of years later when, when I was working, saved some money. I wanted to move to Florence. Uh, wasn't sure. Uh, I was still in the UK. I was in Edinburgh. And there was a teacher there, Sarah Margaret Gibson. She was like, you have to go to Italy. You have to go to Florence. And I was lucky to have a commission, a private commission. And that was a point that I was like, it's happening. Um, yeah, I'm here now. Great, great. Yeah, I, I, you get a nice preparation before. Now you are ready for continue here. But yeah, you mentioned Caravaggio. So is your first love, if you can say, well, the love of uh, in the classical I, I, art? <laughs> well, I, I've, been, I've been between two guys. I've been <laughs> both of them named the same, Michelangelo. Uh, the oh. first one was Michelangelo when I wrote it, the sculpture. Uh, of course, I mean, he's just... Uh, <sighs> I have no words, Michelangelo, when I wrote it, it's just a god, basically. Um, but, you know, he's, he used to work in frescoes, uh, when we're talking about painting, and he was a sculptor, an architect. And then it was Caravaggio. So those two are basically like 
the main, I mean, there were times that I was more into Goya, of course, Velázquez, and I have like a, I mean, Giuseppe Rivera, that's like the ultimate goal. I think that man just took the Tecneva Caravaggio further. But I understood that there's no way to understand Rivera's painting if you don't go through Caravaggio. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, and also his style is very, it's, 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 he's a be- very bestseller artist. He's, his paintings are full of movement. He got something that is very catching. But yeah, I mean. Mm. So, but basically, okay, explain me a little bit. I'm a sculptor. I'm not really deep into the idea of painting. I really, I, I know <laughs> that this is a shame. But uh, explain me more Caravaggio because he has he have a particular style, no? Tell me more about this mm-hmm. style. What is this style? I mean, well, he, I mean, uh, of course, he's very well known for being the guy that pushed the uh, chiaroscuro, the, you know, light and dark. Um, that's the translation. Um, I mean, chiaroscuro was there before, uh, but he took it like to a completely different level. He just, he made something amazing. Um, he he just exaggerated the lights and the darks and as everybody knows, and he makes like all these dim- dynamic compositions and very brutal. And he used to take out all this, you know, idealized beauty on all the characters. He just literally painted people as how they were at the time. And, you know, when you go through art history and you are seeing all these beautiful paintings and the, everybody's like mimicking the Greeks and the Romans and, you know, everybody's like super fit, super beautiful. Well, some of them, like, you know, Michelangelo, they took that a little bit further, but still, like, it's an idealized beauty. And then you got this guy and he's like, no, people is actually ugly and I'm going to paint them ugly. That was basically what he did. And to make it even worse, like, not only ugly, I'm going to put them in this dark, gloomy atmosphere, just with light hitting it straight to them. That's shocking. You know, if you, if you put it in perspective with other artists, um, mm-hmm. you know, maybe that's why he's so popular. So he practically showed the reality, you know, something interesting, no? Because he, he practically created this, this, uh, this style, this system. Mm-hmm. And yeah, what exactly. Do you, what do you, what do you think about that? What do you, our continued research in your style, what is you consider that inspiration for you the, in this technique, this kind of, of system? It's like you said, it's, it's, it's the technique. It, it, that's what it is. I mean, that's like I was mentioning before when I was having all this discussion with people when I was back in England and in Wales and many years ago, and I was like, no, you know, skills are made out of, um, you know, technique you need to know the how he how these guys painted how they paint the colors how they you need to know all the so-called secrets and everybody's like ah, and it's more like something about uh that energy that passion that talent no no i think it's just it has to do more with the technique than anything else and that's why i just pay extra attention like if i want to like I was saying, like when I was a teenager and I was in love with Caravaggio and all these guys, like if I really want to paint like them, I have to understand them. If I want to mm-hmm. be one of the greatest, I have to understand the greatest. How did they paint it? What type of colors did they use? How how were the models? Did they use mirrors, lights, you know, etc. And mm-hmm. that's what I really want to do. Um, of course, Caravaggio is like just a central figure, but there are many, many other artists. And you see that some of them, they have many things in common. And of course, in the academies, they teach you like, like a very basic way of painting. That is like a, like a bit of everything, I will say. Um, but it's always based on, on, on the technique. And in terms of Caravaggio, it's like the, the, the fundamentals. Nice. It's like okay. the ABC. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really methodic and... Yeah, focus in the process, no? So, yeah, yes, it's something... Yeah, especially because the guy could paint very quickly, and that's something shocking, especially when, as a sculptor, for, you know, and... Pro- Say that again? For the system in that day, yeah, I can imagine trying yes. to make quick is, is something that is going advanced to the other painters, no? Uh, well, absolutely. I mean, even today... But back in the day, just imagine he, yeah, I mean, there was like this 
competition amongst painters. They didn't really get on that well. It's extraordinary when you read about it. They, wow, no, 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 no. And, you know, Caravaggio was super quick. And after his period in Rome, he was making like all these big paintings and he managed to do them in a year. And if you think about it, it's like in a year, like paintings that are like almost three meters by three meters, he must have like a control, a big control of the technique. He really understood what he was doing. Right. So that's, that's, his, that's the point. Like, okay, I want to understand that too. Mm, great. Tell me, tell me more about the, the first experience. I think that, yeah, you mentioned about that, uh, that commission that you get it. You, can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, I also have to simplify it because that's when personal life and, and work gets together. But yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, it's, it's when I was in Edinburgh, like, again, I was, uh, I was in an atelier there uh, training. And as I said, like, it was, you know, I have a, a, a few teachers that were very important and Sarah was very important. And she was, like, suggesting, you know, I used to ask her, and she said, like, I think you should go to Florence. You really should. You really should. And, but I was thinking, well, how? You know, and I always try, like, to make things happen. And I was lucky to, you know, uh, I was in the right place, I guess, right time, right people. And yeah, it was this person. It was like he moved from London to Scotland to Edinburgh. And he, um, he just bought a Victorian house. He was rebuilding the Victorian house. Of course, he was a very wealthy man. And he just said it. We have this conversation. And he said, like, well, if you want to paint like Caravaggio and I like Caravaggio, I want you to make a painting for me in that style. It's like that. Oh. I thought I couldn't believe and it. It was like, that, that, that's it. Huh? And the things happen, right? Yeah, mm. it just happened. I mean, sometimes it's that, that's the thing. It's like networking, apparently. I mean, you cannot be everywhere, but sometimes you have to go out there and you say, like, well, I'm a painter. Hello. Mm -hmm. And that's it, you know. Um, you cannot just be in your studio just painting and waiting that someone's going to knock to your door. You have to go out there, go to galleries, talk to people, and you never know. And in this case, it happens like, well... We talk to you, you know, we like what you're doing. And I tried to be humble back then. It's like, look, I, I, I haven't been in Florence. I'm, I, there's many other painters that are way better than me. They were, yeah, but, you know, this kind of other thing that you go, we like it, and why not? And it happens, you know, they say, okay, how, 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 how long do you need? That would just, it was a very big painting, very big. So I so said, like, just give me a year. And yeah, and I work on it. I work on it. It was, it was tough. Nice. It's amazing. Yeah, it's a good story. I can remember, yeah, even for me, it was uh, a commission that helped me to continue my studies, my, my study here in Italy. Mm. So now, practically, yeah, you um, you practically start at this career and as a specialization in this career. And, yeah, uh, what is the idea for the next days? What is the, the plan with this COVID? How you adapt? the dream with, of being a painter in Florence in the middle of quarantine. <laughs> that's precisely what I'm trying to see myself. Like, okay, if you wanted the archetypical life of a Baroque painter, you get it. You're in Italy, you're in Florence, uh, you get in the training, you're painting under a pandemic. Well done. I'm just trying to see some kind of beauty in it. You know, this is the only thing I can do. It's tough, you know, it's tough because like I said before, um, the networking is very important uh, and networking is, is not going there out there to sell your work it's just going to places, meeting people, talking to people, that's it it's like how we met you know, it's, it's not that we just meet up and say, like, hey Octavio, you know I got these paintings and you're a sculptor no, you just, we were in the right place start talking you know, get to know each other a like, little bit better and there's like yeah, like a Florentine cafe. I can remember the good days that Florence was a really, really full of life. And then practically every Friday we can go outside and drink and share experience about art. We miss yeah, this Remember day. those days? Yes, we do. <laughs> remember those days? Wow. Crazy now. Now, now it's, well, you know, and, and everybody yeah. knows that it's, it makes it, things are a little bit more tricky. At least you got that tension, you know, that sometimes you want to do things. And I, I'm, to be honest, like you're busy, I'm busy, everybody's quite busy with, 
you know, with work and painting and stuff. But sometimes having that option of like, you know, today I'm just going to go to one place, to one cafe, or, or I'm going to visit the museum. And, you know, we, we took it for granted. You could go there and just do it. Rather, these days, like, well, can I? Can I really? Maybe I can this week, but maybe not next week. You never know. Yeah. Well, the, the key is continue adapting in the new situation, no? And then... Absolutely. Yeah, we, we Practically, we are in this kind of a system, a traditional system that staying at home or at the studio, continue working for hours and hours is something that don't affect you, you know? Well, psychological, psychologically, some people will be affected, but now, for now, for us, it's not... No, it's because not. We, we have a tendency of spending a lot of time alone in the studio. That's what we want to be, right? That's what we like, just being drawing, just doing what we want to do. Uh, but like I said before, sometimes you have to get out there and just meet people, talk to people, just move, just, you know. Exactly, get the relations, yeah, continue... Yeah, because it's important for the life of an artist, no? And yeah, even not necessarily like I just uh, talk about the work that you did. Maybe you can absorb the information or some experience during these days, and then you can transform in the idea of uh, the painting that you can do. Now, I think that if we need to show something in these days, like a kind of uh, really, really dramatic or something strong, uh, talking about the pandemic, in, the, in Carvalho style, it will be interesting to see. What do you mm -hmm. think about that? No? I mean, of course. I mean, the thing is, I mean, let's put it in a different way. Let, let's put it in this way, like back in the time of Caravaggio and um, the way Caravaggio was painting, he took some of the things that they were already in painting, but he saw part of the suffering and the misery and the struggle of the people at the time, and he managed to combine both things. That's maybe, as, you know, if I understood right what you're saying, that's something that maybe we should try to do. Um, just maybe, but it's, but it's going to be difficult because his time was completely different. I mean, he was in a time that was very, very violent, physically violent. Uh, Rome at the time was a very violent city. Italy was divided between, you know, France and Spain and all the wars and all. I mean, he, they really saw people struggling, like real struggle. But, you know, we can get that lesson and say, well, that helps them to make these powerful images. Maybe we should try to do something similar, just learn the lesson and say, well, what's the struggle in these days? And how can we combine them with their work? If that's what you want to do, of course. These questions, is that, yeah, it's something that you can get it quickly. <laughs> I mean, but you have to keep an eye always of what's going on around you. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So, wow, yeah, Caravaggio is one really, really amazing master. And yeah, you have, if you, what you can, if, if it's possible, you can share some idea of the, in the technical stuff. I know that we are not really talking about the technicals, but what can you share about yeah. that? What is the, the, the well, idea I can that... Give it like a very, I can give it like a very superficial knowledge. I mean, um, explain that's a thing. The, yeah, explain us a little bit what part in this technique process you can try. Oh, we have a question. Yeah, sure. sure. What is your favorite Caravaggio painting? Uh, well, I have a few. But clearly, clearly the uh, David with the head of Goliath, that's, that's one of my favorite. That's, that's a very powerful painting. Also because of the, the background. The, the, um, I mean, probably you know guys, but Caravaggio, he was a bit of a, he was a, bit of a cheeky boy. You know, he, was, he used to get in fights. He used to... He used to hang out with this guy called um, Honorio, Honorio, Honorio Longhi, who was an architect, and he was very violent. Also with the father of um, uh, Temisia Gentileschi, Horazio, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, they used to, well, they got in trouble, they, they, they fight. And it was apparently Caravaggio, well, not apparently, Caravaggio killed this guy called um, Ranuzio Tomassoni uh, in a very 
cruel way, and he had to leave Rome, you know, and basically his punishment was to be executed publicly in Rome, having his head chopped. So he had to run away to Naples, he went to Sicily, and he was forgiven the Pope for forgiveness. And he did this, but, uh, that's the master copy I did, he did, um, he did the... Um, he did this painting, I mean, that's the master copy, of course, but he painted himself as Goliath. And it was a way to say, like, I, you know, he did the catharsis. He said, like, I, I, I understand that what I did was very, very wrong. I really am really sorry. And he, that painting was, you know, in a way to say, I'm sorry, take this as my payment. And eventually he was no, no, forgiven no. by the Pope. It's an offer for peace. Basically. He just sadly, when the Pope said, okay, I forgive you, you can come back, he died in Porto Ercole, in, in Tuscany. Mm -hmm. so, so that the, painting, the, that painting. The painting behind you is one of the paintings that you did. It's a one of the master copies that you get it, right? Yes, yes, because as we were talking before, in order to understand, I mean, a master copy is very good when you really want to understand. That's, that's what it is. I mean, in the academies, we follow you know, like a program and we really... We, we learn a lot and we really make an effort to understand what's going on and et cetera, you know. But I recommend it to everybody, like if you have an artist that you really like, do a master copy. Try to see with their eyes. Try to see how they deal with, with the problems because painting is solving problems, basically, in order to say something. Um, and that's the one I did. I did a, a few more, but that's the one I did recently uh, whenever I have free time from the academy and... You and know, this is your um, favorite. Yes, I, it's very important to choose a painting that it tells you something. I mean, if, if I get a painting from a painter that doesn't, I mean, all paintings say something. There's no painting out there from this period of time that is ugly or something like that. All of them are super beautiful and very powerful. But sometimes there are certain paintings that they connect with you, and this one does. Um, I don't know if because, you know, maybe we look alike or something with a beard and the hair, but... Um, yeah, you have the same look like the, in the painting. Yeah, but that's because I'm posing for Ramiro at some point and he said, like, just leave your beard and your hair very long. <laughs> so now I'm looking like a, I kind of want those troublemakers in Rome, so... Um, but yeah, I did it and like what you were saying before about the... Uh, the technique and everything, you know, trying to understand, like, okay, how this guy painted. He was very quick. How can I be quick? It's known when you read that he used to use mirrors. So it's like, okay, I see, like, all the construction of the drawing, uh, of the painting, of constructing the painting on the canvas with, with through, you know, the mirrors. Okay, fine. Okay, okay, I got that. I get... But then it's the, um, when he made, like, a drastic division between his light and dark, and he did the um, the famous Grisaya, which is basically mm -hmm. painting with one color. Um, Grisaya is like a French word for gray, um, and that's it. He just started with a Grisaya, and then he just added a couple of colors in the background, and with that he achieved like a sense of 3D, very powerful, and then after that, he will start adding some more colors and details until he got like this powerful image. And I just try to, you know, to understand as an exercise. Cool. So the process normally with the transfer drawing and then he practically simplifies some elements that help even yeah, in the future. I, I mean, as far, I, I mean, because that, at that time, as I said before, you know, they, they need to make a, a profit very quickly and painters were, um, I mean, it was very difficult to be a painter back in the time. You know, it, it, the competition was real. So you needed to be faster, faster than the other ones. So um, the transfer drawing, I mean, because Caravaggio is known for not having preliminary studies like many other artists. And many people, well, they used to think like, oh, that's because he was a genius or blah. No, no, it's, it's, he was a smarter and he was using the mirror. He took the mirrors to another level. And he would just like create the composition, which he was amazing creating compositions. He was very good. But he would use all the mirrors to somehow project through lights the image in the canvas. So he will trace um, the, the, yeah, the, what it would be the preliminary drawing already in the canvas, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And then with the model in front, he will start 
working only on the lights, making a division between lights and shadows, like very drastic. And you, we can see that because, you know, some, um, if you keep an eye on, on any kind of a new painting, especially right at the end where he's in Sicily, you see that the paintings are very flat, except in the lights. The lights are full of, of impasto. Mm -hmm. And that's the yeah. Grisaglia, basically. That's something that he will work on later. Hmm. Interesting. Amazing. And so practically, yeah, you are focusing the, in the in the master copies. So you learn a lot about that. And did you research something in books or some additional? You did you recommend some kind of uh, information? Jesus. Yes. I mean, but I really don't know where to uh, where to start because there are many sources. That's the thing. And usually what I, what I did, and it kind of helped, it was looking for um, treatises on paintings of that time. That helps. Um, and there are many art histories that, uh, sorry, art history books that they give you like a lot of information on how to paint it. So many a manual on, on Baroque painting will help. I mean, it's not, but, but that's the thing. There's no like, it, it, it's not, um, there's not a recipe. Because some of this knowledge is, um, is what some scholars think it could have. Because Caravaggio painted in a different way when he was younger. And then when he was older, he painted in a different way. So really going to a book, it doesn't really help. I think the ideal thing is to work it out yourself, if that makes sense. So just go to the museum and do a master copy. Start doing a color study. Then go back home. Do some research on what you think it really works. You know, like, okay, the Grisaglia is very obvious. How does the Grisaya work? Make your research, and that might give you your answers, if that makes sense. Because otherwise you're looking for a recipe, and that doesn't really work. I see, I see. So practically continue learning during the times. Interesting. Well, okay, uh, tell me what, uh, well, we can open section for questions, maybe, it's possible to some uh, some questions come from the from the from the viewers but in okay. general what yeah what i can uh, i can start with the idea so what is the next project maybe in in the master copies or what is the next step in the part of the process that you continue learning it would be nice to um to take it further and actually turn this into a workshop it would be nice to to share it with other people because it's very it's very interesting when you are doing your own research. Uh, I mean, because we are, as you know, you know, we do something in the academies, we learn something in the academies, and we follow in that path, and and that's it. But then, when you're doing a workshop, it's also interesting when you're giving to other people knowledge. It's interesting to see how they are reacting and how they understand what you're telling them, and that's going to reflect back on you. That makes sense? Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, like to see other people working on the Grisaya and how the people deal with the Grisaya, for example. You can see, I mean, it's not like you're reading in a book. Like You can see how people are working with the Grisaya, for example. And that's a very good way to learn as, hell, um, as well, if you see what, what I mean. We have Ramiro. Ramiro, Ramiro. Ramiro ¿qué tal? <laughs> Ramirez, the one that, the, you know, he's, he's the one that told me to leave the beer and the hair like that. That's, that's why I look like Caravaggio. <laughs> so it's, it's Ramiro. Uh, yeah. And I think and there was like a question. Yeah, go for the question. Let's see if I can read it. Uh, do you notice many difference between how he painted? Uh, I mean, yes, of course, there's a difference, of course. But... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's laughing, of course. Um, I mean, the difference, to be honest, I don't know, Ramirez watching, I don't know what he's going to, to say, <laughs> but um, to be honest, I don't see a massive, massive difference. I mean, of course, there's a difference in how they perceive the painting, uh, but the palette is fairly, very limited. Mm. To come, you know, to have like everything very um, mm, compact and there has to be a sense of unity. And the fact that Caravaggio uses just a few colors, and the Baroque painters, they, they didn't go crazy 
with colors. The palette was very, very limited. And I can see that in, in, in the Florence Academy and many others, they use like a very limited um, palette. So I see a connection. Maybe, of course, then, you know, in the Florence, they do the things were completely different, of course. <laughs> My bad, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Okay, well, yeah, you complete practically the essence, all the knowledge, and even the look like the Baroque painter. So <laughs> I, I didn't choose you. I didn't. I didn't choose you. <laughs> Ramiro told me like he, he suggested me. He was very kind to say, oh, you know, would you like to post for me? I said, of course, it's an honor. Uh, I'm going to be. Um, I think I understand I'm going to be in the jungle. So he's like, the hair and the beard have to be very long. And I just been like three, two weeks, three weeks, something like that. I don't know, like, yeah, looking like this. So <laughs> perfect, you know, lockdown uh, kind of thing. We have another question. Do you use the same palette when you paint? Uh, no, I mean, it depends what it, no, 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 no. I mean, for this research that I'm doing, yeah, uh, because again, I'm trying to to understand the um, the Baroque uh, master. So of course, I'm trying to have like a very similar type of of, of colors and everything. Uh, but you know, I know in the academies is completely different. Depending the subject matter is going to change. So not not always. Um, Sometimes you don't need to use the same red. Sometimes you don't need to, you know, uh, not necessarily to use lead white always. It, depending on what you're painting, the palette might change slightly. But always keep it very limited. Very, very limited. Could you explain me a little more about the limited palette? Yes. Or something? <laughs> yes, yes, of course. I mean, limited palette is just like using, I mean, of course, the Florence Academy have like a certain, certain colors. But a limited palette is trying to, to it's like the, the um, Apelles palette in the ancient Greeks or the Sorum palette. So you have basically like a white and a black. It could be lead white, usually it's lead white and Mars black. And then you will use like a red, English red, or the many types, of course. And then the uh, Naples yellow, um, a raw amber. And you try to use those colors. I mean, they might change depending on what you are. Uh, but you use those colors to copy nature. So in nature, of course, we see many colors, uh, and we, but our eyes cannot get all the information, so we have to simplify what we see, and we use those colors to try to make it like a very simple copy. So that would be the, the limited palette, basically. So using that, plus the good separation of the light and shadows, practically is, when, is, is the way that the masterpieces were made, it, right? At least in the Baroque era, yes, absolutely, yes, yes, because they got the sense of three D through the grisaille um, and the background, mm. and then it was just a matter of like describing, you know, the flesh stones, and again, like all these guys, I got the feeling that depending who, not always, but they used to have like some kind of uh, rules, if that makes sense, uh, because again, the goal, I mean, of course, they wanted to make something beautiful, but for them, it, was no, it wasn't making art for the sake of making art. It was making art for the sake of religion, which was very important at the time, especially mm. Caravaggio and the followers. They were in a time that it was the worst of religion, and that's basically Baroque art and the uh, um, Counter-Reformation, I think it's called in English, like Counter-Reforma. Mm. Um, so, you know, they needed to create images, and of course, very good images. Okay. So they needed to do it quick and, you know, with a very powerful impact on the viewer, that was the goal. Like all time is different. We go more times to to play with other things, with color. You know, it's, it's different, in my opinion. Amazing, great. So practically, yeah, we we hear about you practically studying here. So in the future, we need to try to continue doing uh, a different uh, checks about. What continue research in uh, in uh, about Caravaggio, so. and yeah, practically, um, what can you say about the um, the the other projects that you have apart of the idea of more workshops? 
like other projects, like other uh, personal mm -hmm. projects. Yeah, so okay. another person. For, for you, Caravaggio can be a. No, 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 no. He's. I would say he's the opposite of. Uh, no, the the so, um. You know the, the la maniera. It was like the way of Raphael and Michelangelo, like the the. Uh, you know the supremacy of drawing of a painting and a very idealized and exaggerated mm -hmm. type of. Um, figures and movement. Just Caravaggio went to the other side. I would say. He was more naturalistic. Mm. He was trying to portray uh, things as they were. Um, I mean, and that went just to another level with Rivera. I mean, that's 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 why Rivera is so important. And about when he, you answered your question, answer your question about projects. I mean, for the well, time my, being, I just especially my my question is more about, for example, here in Florence. Here in Florence, you have the essence, but we have Caravaggio works. Mm -hmm. Can you tell yes. us about that? In the Robert the Fundacion, in the foundation, sorry, in the um, Fundazione Roberto Longhi, there are some paintings of Caravaggio, and of course, in the, I mean, it's true that Caravaggio he didn't spend much time in Florence. He was more, even though he was born in Milan, well, in Caravaggio, a little town near Milan, and then he shortly after moved to Rome, and he spent basically all the years in Rome, um, and then he went to Naples. Malta, Sicily, and he died in Porto Orcole. Well, the majority of his paintings are basically in Rome and some of them are in, in Napoli and many other places. Uh, however, like, the Tuscanies link it somehow with Caravaggio, not only because he died there, also because the La Fundazione Roberto Longhi, that they did a great uh, job researching and, you know, in, uh, studying Caravaggio works here in Florence. But also because, for example, Caravaggio's work was deeply influenced by this guy called um, Felipe Neri, who, he was um, a religious man in the time, and he was born in Florence. And he was a, one of the main influences in Caravaggio. I see. So, you know, that, like, somehow, like, Tuscany has, like, a very um, certain influence on Caravaggio, even though he never really was here. But still, mm -hmm. you know, there are some works here, and of course, the head of Medusa is here, and you know, it, no, it, the only I thing we need is like the, the museums to be open and and the who. Yeah, definitely, we need to wait for the for the museum. No, I mentioned exactly that because, for example, my idea is try to see with my eyes what the masterpieces that I really love that I did when I saw the David here in Florence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One project for you, maybe could be take some notes from directly from the the masterpieces, or so. Sometimes yeah, of course. I mean, it would be ideal to to you know <laughs> to to get your your notebooks and go to the museums and do your own research there. Like you were saying before, like do your a uh, color study, and and that would be amazing. It's just we live in the times that we live today, so we don't really know what's yeah. going to happen. Yeah, saw it with your eyes, no? You don't need to trust in the printing, in the books, no, or... No. no, 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 not at all. No, if, I mean, if someone that is here listening, want an advice, a humble advice, if you really want to study an author, a painter, and you really want to do a, you know, a, a copy the master, just mm. look for the painting, what it is, go to the museum, G draw it, uh, spend hours looking, and then just do a color study of that painting. Don't trust like your computer. Don't trust the print. Like, no, nah. that that's good. Maybe if you want to trace the drawing, that's good to recognize the shapes and the form. Go to the real place. That's the deal. Just go to the museum, guys. Go to the museum. <laughs> and if you continue talking about that. So what other recommendation? We are close to to finish this interview. Uh, what can you recommend for the people that is interesting, maybe not in specific Carvalho, but in the classical painting, classical art? So some words? Well, I 
more than words, I will suggest a couple of books, so especially one book. Um, and of course, then they can research on the artists that they like. But it will be interesting. There's a book called The uh, Invention of Art by this guy, uh, this guy called Larry Shiner. He was published in 2001. And it's a book that basically, he basically proves that art is an invention of the 19th century, uh, 18th, 19th century, more like a Germanic idea of, you know, idea of genius and all these things. But previously it was more like a craft and he proved it. He talks about like the Greeks didn't have a word for art that you have a word called techne, which can be translated as technology some, somehow. The Romans have like that word translated as ars. Um, but you know, it was always like a crap. Maybe the Romans were closer to us, but not that much. The medieval time was completely different. Yeah, medieval times, you know, they have like the, the, the different um, organization of the priests. They will have like, you know, they will paint in glass, they will paint in, in miniatures, etc. But it was always a crap. And then you can see in the book, he explains how the artists are trying to, uh, in the Renaissance especially, because they were trying to go up in uh, socially, um, how they started to develop like a, a more sophisticated language, um, to be able to speak images more powerful. It's very interesting. It's very interesting. Um, and he mentioned quite a few painters, and it's a fascinating book. That's a suggestion, you know, to have like a wider understanding of why we're doing this, the history of, of all this, and then just choose your favorite time or, or um, your favorite artist and just research on that guy. But you have like a wider understanding of everything. Go to your artist and like I said before, go to a museum and just do a master copy. Just try, train your eyes to see, copy to understand. I see. Okay. I understand. <laughs> Amazing. So, something that you want to share before that, or uh, practically we have um, an amazing interview with you. Oh, okay, everything is okay with. We are. We have a problem connection. Huh. Okay. Apparently, our guests get a little problem, but let's wait for if he can connect again so we can say bye. But let's see. Let's see. Probably he gets a, uh, yeah, internet connection maybe. But something that I want to share with the people is, is exactly that, no? So try to continue practice, try to see the, the master copies, try to reproduce it, and that help. So you're practically training your eye with that. Okay, Borja is back. We're waiting for him. He's connecting again. Yeah, okay. I accept again. Yeah, a little technical problem, but he's back. Hey, Borja. Mm -hmm. I accept. Uh huh. He's. The connection is not getting well. Oh, okay. Okay. Ah, yeah, you're yeah. back. Yeah, so <laughs> suddenly I did. You yeah. just freeze. I was like, what's going on? What happened? And yeah, well, technology. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, yeah, you are talking, you invite, you invite the, the viewers to continue practice, to using the copy, master copies. And then, yeah, so practically you continue invite people to travel. It's difficult in these days, but 
Florence is Florence. So you, if you want to learn this kind of art, one of the best places in the world is definitely Italy, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. I mean, Italy is number one. Uh, every single, like, you know, uh, from Peru and from Spain, I think it's the same in every single country, but in Spain, we always say, like, a painter, you no, know, a real painter, if he didn't travel to Italy. Velázquez went to Italy, Goya went to Italy, Rivera went to Italy, Picasso went to Italy, everybody went to Italy. We need to talk about one of those amazing painters maybe in the future. And definitely, I'm really happy that in the future we, get, we can host uh, a workshop with you. So That's great. It's an honor. <laughs> so, okay. Thanks for the interview and we see you soon. Absolutely. It was a pleasure, Octavio. Thank you for having me. Take okay, care. Okay, bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.